don't want to blog.com Cause you don't have the time You can focus on your job While we blog, blog, blog for you Hi, it's Jen Miller, and on today's episode, episode two, we are going to be talking about how to start your blog. I've been an active blogger since the AOL days. I started in 1996 and have insight to share with you that will bring you traffic and help you to engage your site visitors and increase your goal conversion. In our last episode, I shared with you the five must-haves for every website. This episode is going to focus on the actual content that will be on your blog. First, you need to choose what you are going to write about. One question I get from clients often is related to how we find topics to write about. We use a relatively simple formula and check three to five sources to gather details so that we have enough information to create something original on each topic. Sources we turn to for information include many you would expect, but some you may not. We typically do not use Wikipedia or other wiki-related articles, as many people use these as their sources, and we want to produce original content. In the case of community pages and community event blog posts, we may search online for a town name, the word event, and a month and year to see what is currently relevant to the area. Maybe Vancouver events, September 2016, for example. Or for issues relating to timely topics in insurance, we may type in workers' comp insurance or workers' comp issues 2016. Once you retrieve the results, you don't just use the first listing that appears. You need to explore a little and read through three to five results so you can develop an interesting story that will speak to your readers. You want to give them a reason to care about what you are writing. That really is the secret to successful content. You need to look for topics that tug at heartstrings, present a current issue, are off the beaten path, or are exciting and local. When I train new writers that need someone to blog, I go over this process, and then I explain that it's important to think of each post and page as having five critical elements. The first one we've already gone over. Creating interesting and unique content that sets you or your business apart. And when you do this, it's essential that you integrate two to three keyword phrases in each piece of content. One of these phrases will be your primary or main keyword phrase, and the others will be mentioned once on your page or your post. These phrases need to be weaved into the story you write so they're not noticeable. This is possible even when your subject seems completely unrelated. For instance, maybe you are in real estate in Philadelphia and your article is about a color run. You could use phrases such as enjoy a good run if you live in Philadelphia or race near your Philly home. Both of these are easy ways to integrate your keywords into your story. Other phrases like Amber Onyx may be more difficult to weave in, but I've found that all keywords are possible if given enough thought. Next, you need to upload an original or purchased image or images, and you need to remember to name your images as you save them with the same primary keyword or phrase for that page or post. You also need to, once they're uploaded into your page, make sure that your photos have the right alt tag, which use that keyword phrase. Once you have a good feel for the page and its content, you can then title your page and add a secondary header caption halfway through the post that employs the same primary keyword phrase. If your piece is extra long, you're going to want to have more than one subheader. At this point, you need to write up your custom meta description for the page or post. This is going to repeat your primary keyword phrase, and it has to be interesting since sometimes this is the only thing that can hook your reader in through the search engines. Meta descriptions are what is shown below the title in search results, and readers click on the results based on what they say. If your meta description is boring, why would somebody want to read more on your website? Your last step before reviewing the page draft and getting ready to publish is to look through your own website and decide what, if any pages, you should link so that you can give your readers the best possible experience and encourage them to move through your site. That's it. That is how we write blog posts and websites day in and day out, and it's a process that just works. It's only five steps, but that five-step process will help you to build your blog and it can drag on for days if you let it.
The key is to just get it done. If you can't do it yourself, then train a team member or hire a company like ours that specializes in creating consistent, hyperlocal, sign sensitive content. You can have content created in your voice so that when your client comes to your website, they will feel that connection with you. So I want you to get to work on your blog and then send in your questions and your blog post URLs to help me at jenmiller.com. I'll read through them and I will make suggestions in upcoming episodes on how you can improve your blog posts on your website. I'm looking forward to reviewing your sites in the coming weeks. Thanks for tuning in and see you in episode three where we will get strategic and ask the question, does my content really work and tackle the essentials of tracking. Need someone to blog.com Cause you don't have the time You can focus on your job While we blog, blog, blog for you Check out the website and you'll see Try it out and become an icon of your industry We will develop a voice for your blog To connect with your 